If you've never taken calculus and you always maybe wondered, why is calculus so important? Why do people need to study this? Well, hopefully this little problem right here will demonstrate that. Okay, so what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to find the area of this blue region right here. Now, even if you don't know any calculus and maybe you only have some basic algebra knowledge and skills, that's perfectly fine. Matter of fact, if you don't know much math at all, you'll still be able to follow along. So don't run away from this video because you've never taken calculus. Okay, so we're trying to find the area of this blue shaded region right here. Now, if we look closely, we have a line, okay, this line right here, and we could define that line algebraically as y is equal to 3x. Now, underneath this line, we have this curve. Now, this curve in mathematics is called a parabola, and we could define it by the equation y is equal to x squared. But you can see this line and this curve form this blue region. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is find the area of this blue region. Now this point right here, 3, 9, is where these two, uh, where the curve and the line intersect, and they all also intersect down here at the point 0, 0. Okay, so let's see exactly how we can use calculus to find the area of this blue region. Now before we get into the area of this blue region, let's just kind of talk about what calculus can do for us. So it's very easy using calculus to find the area underneath a line or curve or a curve on the x, y plane. Okay, so this is very, very simple to do. I'll show you the actual calculus here in a second. But uh, if I wanted to find the area, for example, underneath this line, I can easily do that uh, using calculus. Likewise, let me kind of just erase this here so you can see, if I wanted to find the area underneath this curve, I could do that as well, All right? So that's not a problem. Now, because we can find the area underneath curves very easily using calculus, I want this region right here. So how can we get to this particular region? Well, let's talk about kind of the main um, idea of this video, okay? All right, so the main idea is this. So the first thing is it's very easy to find the area underneath curves and lines using calculus. But if you want to find the area of a region, well, we kind of have to use uh, some creative thinking to do this. Okay, so let's take a look at this line, y is equal to 3x. And again, I can easily find the area underneath this line. Now, I don't want this entire area. So you can see here it's kind of forming a triangle. Now, when you are taking the area underneath a curve or line in calculus, it's kind of bounded by the x-axis, right? So I can find all this area right here, not a problem. Now, if we look over here, y is equal to x squared, this is our curve, our parabola, and I can easily find the area underneath this as well. But I want this blue region, so how am I going to, how am I going to get to this blue region? Well, if we can find this entire area right here, and then subtract away this a part of it, okay, the area underneath this curve, well, I'm going to be left with the area of this blue region. Okay, so that's basically the main setup here. We can find the area of this and then subtract away the area of this and we'll get to that blue region. Now, we have to kind of talk about something called bounds because this blue region starts at zero. And if you recall, this intersection point up here is the point three nine which is three on the X axis. Hopefully this kind of conceptually sets up what's going on. All right, so we're gonna find the area underneath this line, Y is equal to three X up to zero to three, or zero to three underneath or on the X, Y uh, plane. And then we're gonna find the same area underneath this curve from zero to three. And then we're going to take the difference and we'll have the area of this blue region. Okay, so now that we understand conceptually what we want to do, and that is we want to find the area underneath this line, 3x, and then subtract away the area underneath this curve, x squared. That'll give us the area of this blue region. So to do this, we need to use some calculus, and specifically, we need to understand this symbol in calculus. And this is called the elongated s, but it's basically what we call an integral, all right? And this tells us the area underneath curves. So what we want to do is find the area of the line, okay, from the point 0, 3, starting from 0 all the way out to 3 because this defines our uh, region here, our blue region, 
and then we want to subtract away the area of the curve. All right, now of course the curve is defined by x squared and the line is defined by 3x. Okay, so this is going to be the basic setup here and the actual uh, calculus, the steps here, is really not that difficult. So again, if you don't know calculus, don't be surprised that this is going to be very easy. Okay, so we need to understand the concepts before we get into the actual mechanics. So hopefully you understand what we're trying to do. So again, to find the area under, underneath this, or find the area of this blue region, we need to find the area underneath 3x, this line, and we're going to take away the area underneath that curve, x squared, from 0 to 3. Okay, so now we get to actually do some calculus and calculate the area of this blue region. So the way we use calculus or the notation uh, to figure out the uh, area of a region is the following, right? We're going to subtract away these areas to get that specific region. So we're going to write this integral, and this basically means just find the area underneath this line, 3x, from 0 to 3, and then subtract away the area underneath this curve defined as x squared from 0 to 3. All right, so this is going to give us the area. Now we have this little dx thing here. This is, uh, uh, it's not that important for our problem, but if you actually take calculus, this is important. Okay, so I don't want to completely disregard this notation, but you know, if you don't understand that, it's not going to uh, stop you from understanding how we calculate the area. Okay, so what we need to do now is actually find the integral of this function, okay, 3x minus x squared. Now, in calculus, we have all different sorts of rules to integrate, right? So this is what this is called, and a lot of the rules are very easy. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this rule works, and to do that, we need to look at the exponents here. So we have 3x, or 3x to the first power, minus x squared. So we have to pay special attention to these exponents. So you're going to see that this is very easy, and you literally only need to understand some basic algebra to do calculus once you understand these concepts. Okay, so this is our function 3x, or 3x to the first, minus x squared. So the way we integrate this function right here is the following. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 1 to the exponent. So 1 plus 1 is what? Well, that is 2. And then we're going to take our answer and we're going to divide the whole thing by that exponent. So it's going to be 3x squared divided by 2. Okay, so once again, what I did here is I took my exponent, I added 1, that answer is 2. I want to take the entire thing and divide by that answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. We have x squared, so it's going to be x squared plus 1, that is 3. So we're going to take this entire thing and divide by 3. Okay, so now we integrated this function. 3x minus x squared. So what does this mean? Well, now we're ready to set up and actually calculate the numeric uh, value of the area of this region. Okay, so what we're going to do is take our answer here and we're going to subtract it from itself. So we have 3x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 and we're going we're to take that and we're going to subtract it from itself. So you can see that right here. So we have our answer minus our answer. But what we're going to do here, you can see we have x's in these expressions, is we're going to replace um, our x's here, okay, with 3 and 0. Now remember, 3 and 0 are the bounds. Let me go back up here, 0 to 3, right? And let me kind of go back up here. What we're talking about are these points, 0 and 3 on the x-axis. We want to find the area underneath the curve from 0 to 3. So we're going to plug in these values into our answer and do some number crunching. So let's do that right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our higher bound 3 into the first expression, and then we'll plug in 0 into the second expression. Now this uh, uh, part of the problem is super easy because when we replace these x's with 0, you're going to get 3 times 0 squared uh, over 2. This whole thing is just 0, and this right here will be 0 cubed over uh, 3. This would be 0, so this entire thing is 0. So really what we need to do is simply do the number crunching for this when x is equal to 3, and that will be our answer. Okay, so now let's go ahead and replace x with 3, and when we do all this number crunching, we'll have our answer. So anytime you replace a variable 
with a number you always want to use parentheses. So here it's going to be 3 parentheses 3 squared over 2, and you could say have that written right there, minus parentheses 3 cubed, and that's written right here, over 3. So when you're doing all this number crunching, you have to be very careful you don't make any uh, errors. So this is the setup right here. Okay, so we have to be careful with the order of operations. We have 3 times 3 squared. You have to do powers first. So 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is what? Well, that is going to be 27. So this entire thing right here will be 27 over, uh, 27 over 2. So here, this is 3 cubed, or 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27, or 27 over 3. Okay, we don't have common... Uh, we don't have a lowest common denominator here, but we can fix this up. And the LCD is what? Well, the LCD is 6. So if you multiply this uh, denominator by 3, we have to also multiply this numerator by 3. And if we multiply this uh, denominator by 2, uh, we also have to multiply this numerator by 2. We're going to end up with fractions with the lowest common denominator of 6. So hopefully you understand that. And let's go ahead and uh, wrap this problem up. So 27 over 2 is going to be the same thing as 81 over 6. We have our lowest common denominator. Remember, remember you can't add or subtract fractions unless the denominators are the same. And then 27 over 3 is going to be the same thing as 54 over 6. We have that LCD of 6. So now all we have to do is subtract the numerators. So that's going to be 81 minus 54. And of course, that is 27. All right, so 27 over 6, we can reduce that down to 9 halves. This is our answer. Okay, this is the area of this blue shaded region right here. It is 9 halves units squared. Okay, so this is calculus, all right? And hopefully you didn't find this that difficult. Now, to learn calculus, if you really want to study it, you have to obviously take pre-calculus. And to take pre-calculus, you need to take things like Algebra 2, Geometry, but you can certainly work your way up to it if you really want to take Calculus, right? Calculus is a, you know, broad, you know, advanced uh, mathematics, but if you're uh, interested in taking Calculus and you're like, you know, I really want to learn this stuff, well, you could definitely do that. Now, if you uh, want to review some mathematics, if you're maybe, you know, at the Algebra 1 level, or maybe you kind of want to start learning math all from the beginning, a couple quick recommendations here. One, I have a course. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It's called Math Skills Rebuilder. All right, so for those of you out there that have been away from math for many, many years, you could take this course and then take my pre-calculus course. You can actually be ready to take uh, a calculus course if you want to do that. Okay, But if you're just like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I just wanted to learn a little bit of calculus, well, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.